everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ashley and I'm an architect in Ontario. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about an alternative pathway to licensure. And it doesn't require a university degree. Now, I went through the university route, so I got my bachelor's degree in architecture and a master's degree in architecture from an accredited program. Now, when I went into the university route, I didn't know about the syllabus program through the RAIC. So by the end of this video, you're going to understand what the program is about, the application process, the fees associated, and also the admission requirements. So if you're interested, let's get started. Number one, the program. The syllabus program is a self-paced program. Now it's important to note that in order to become a licensed architect in Canada, there are three main requirements. One is education, experience, and examinations. So when you do the traditional university route, you need to get a master's degree if your undergrad is not accredited. So in my case, I went through the university route and so I had to get my master's degree and my bachelor's degree. And after getting my education and it came and my master's was from an accredited program, I was then able to become an intern architect. And then when I was an intern architect, I was able to collect my experience and you need to collect 3,720 hours. Now, of course, I share my journey of licensure up above here, so you can watch that video, and I won't be getting into the details in this video. And so once I got my hours, I then needed to do my examinations, and of course, depending on the province in which you work and live, there might be additional requirements. So that was the route that I took, and so I did the university route, the more traditional route, and we're going to be talking about the syllabus program and the syllabus program is an alternative pathway to licensure and it is a self-paced program and it includes both the academic studies and working experience and design workshops and once you're done the program you have a professional diploma in architecture and this program is accepted and accredited by the CACB. The program courses are offered online through the education service provider of Athabasca University. So all the courses are mainly offered and completed online. Now the design studios are done and completed in person through 12 local chapters across the country. So unlike the university route where you have to do your education, your internship, and then your examinations, very segmented, with the syllabus program you're actually able to concurrently do your education and experience at the same time, which is an advantage because it does offer you some flexibility. So you're able to work full time or even part time and also do your studies and complete your courses your educational requirement. So it does offer some flexibility. Now, one of the advantage of the syllabus program is in comparison to the university route, where you do take a lot of electives and there's a lot of fluff courses, in the syllabus program, you actually just do the core courses and it's very focus and straight to the point and you're also able to work and gain experience in the field while you are completing your studies. So that is a nice thing to have. So I did again the university route. So I did a four year undergrad and then my master's program should have been a two year program, but I ended up taking three years to complete it. So and that was a seven, sorry, that was a seven year process for myself. Now the syllabus program in comparison to the university route is actually very similar in terms of the overall amount of years. So for example, I in the end took 15 years to complete my education, my experience, my examination, and the additional requirements by my jurisdiction. So it took me 15 years to complete everything. And by doing the syllabus program, you're looking at eight to 16 year window. Now, of course, this depends on the individual and of course I found that collecting my hours 
you know the average time they say you can get it in two years but the reality is you can't get it in two years it's very rare that anyone gets it done in two years it actually took me six years and there's some people that it even took them longer so it does vary and it does depend on where you're working the practice in which you work and so on so it does vary quite a bit so don't focus in too much on those numbers but if you look at it it is very comparable. The syllabus program and the university route are very similar in terms of the overall time it takes to complete the program. Now, it's important to note that there is no fast track to getting your license, so don't think that the syllabus program or the university route is a fast track. I would more look at the programs and compare it. Maybe perhaps take a look at the student work on the website. I've included some links down below to the RAC syllabus program website and really investigate and see if that's something you'd be interested. Do you like that flexibility? and see how the program is laid out versus taking the university route. Now, it's important to note that you could get advanced standing through the syllabus program. So if, for example, you already have a four-year bachelor's degree from a university, you may be able to transfer some of the courses that you've already done in your undergrad into the syllabus program, and we'll talk more about that. Now, let's dive into the program details. So here I have on the screen the syllabus program and we're going to walk through the program orientation. So as you can see here, this is the syllabus categories. Now there are two categories into the program. So there is the diploma program candidates. So this is where you're going to get the professional diploma and this would include getting that experience and also doing your educational requirements. So by the end, when you do get your diploma, you are basically an architect. Once you complete all of the components of it, the exams, the experience, and all of the courses as well. And number two, you have the Canadian Architectural Certification Board referral students. So when you are referred from the CACB and you have to meet the academic certification, you are you do need to complete some additional courses in order to get your educational requirements met. The CACB may refer you to this program for courses that you need to take part. So here, let's get into the syllabus academic calendar. There's term one, which starts in March 1st to June 15, which is 12 weeks, and then term two, September 1st to December 15, which is 12 weeks. So let's get into the diploma program duration. So again, you're looking at eight to 12 years. Now I do have a colleague that's going through this program right now and it's taking them a bit longer than this. Of course, this is self-paced, so this really depends on the individual. You know, perhaps you are working full-time, you have other personal things going on as well. So it really depends on individual to individual and so this is just an average they state but I've been finding that that could be a bit longer so it may take you longer than the 8 to 12 years. So there's part one which includes introduction to architecture and this part one is about two to three years and there are nine courses to complete in the first part of the program. And now part two is a two to three year program and it has 10 courses and you also, once you get into part two, you can begin to log your experience. Part three of the program is four to six years and the course load is nine courses. And you can continue logging your experience in this time and continue building that experience. Now let's get into the syllabus course sequence table. So here you have the syllabus course table and here you can see it visually. So you have part one, and so here you can see you're going to take some history courses, some theory courses, some design, and also some technology courses, so like material properties and applications, introduction to structures, and so on. So that would be your first part. Then part two, there's also some history courses in architecture. You're also going to get into the theory. There's a bit more theory classes in comparison to part one. And you also have some design courses as well and also more technology courses as well in structures and so on. 
And now, in, as you can see in part two, you can start to log your hours. And you need to, of course, be employed under the supervision of a licensed architect. You can begin to log a minimum of 2,800 hours in part two. Then in part three, you have no more history and architecture courses. You start to get into theory, just one course, and then it is more heavy in design and you're starting to get a little less technology courses, but there's still three courses that you have to do. And then you start to get more professional practice courses. And then in this particular part, you're able to record a minimum of 7,000 hours in this part for your internship in architecture program. So logging those hours. So here you have the three parts of the program. And so here we have just some program components and it actually gets into the sequence of the theory courses and it breaks down what those are about and the history courses, the technology sequence and the professional practice sequence and they get into also the design studio workshop courses and you can go into those for further details and they also just break down the work experience as well. The syllabus program is self-paced, so it's important to note that you're gonna need to have good time management skills. You should account for a minimum of 30 plus hours of studying per week, plus you have to account that you're gonna be working because you're gonna be gaining that experience and that could be you're working part-time or full-time and then you also have your personal life as well. So that's something important to keep in mind when you are thinking about the syllabus program, that it is a little less structured in a way in comparison to the university route, but it does offer that flexibility. But in offering that flexibility, you need to be careful with your time. So you're gonna to have to have good time management skills and self-motivation as well. So keep that in mind when you are considering the syllabus program. Number two, program admission requirements. So now let's get into the program admission requirements. So here we have the syllabus program requirements for admission. Now the admission requirements for the program is quite open. However, you do need to have grade 12 articulation. And you also need, of course, internet access because all of the courses are offered online. So that's important. Although the syllabus program has an open admissions policies, you do need to have post-secondary level English and math skills. And if English is a second language, candidates must provide evidence of passing the test of English as a foreign language or Canadian academic English language with their application. And the following are the minimum scores required. So it's important to have these minimum scores in order to be eligible for the syllabus program. And of course, it's also important to note that you know, architecture is a creative field and part of your application for the program includes a portfolio. So you need to have some sort of creative ability and showcase that ability in your portfolio for admission. And that needs to include to have, you know, you need to possess at least some significant drawing skills. So some sketches, abstract renderings, you know, and these materials could be a variety of media done in a variety of media, uh, such as pencil, pen and ink, watercolor, and so on. And you can also have the ability, or you should also have the ability to create 3D objects. So like modeling, uh, 3D building modeling. So those are the eligibility requirements for the syllabus program. Number three, program fees. Now let's go into the program fees for all the courses and also the administrative costs as well. So let's look into those. So here we have the syllabus program fees for the program and also the, ske the schedule for payments. So um, there are two terms, uh, February 1st to June 15 and term two, August 1st to December 15. And so here we're gonna go into the fees for 2021. And so there are some late charges that you need to keep in mind, uh, refunds. There's also some administrative fees as well. So, and those are all included here. So I would take a look at those. And now let's go into the program course fees. So let's go into the syllabus course fee table. So here we have the syllabus course fee table for 2021. And so this gives you a breakdown for each part of the syllabus program. So part one, the introduction to architecture. 
you have nine courses. And on the side here, you have the associated fees for each course. So foundations of design, architectural design theory and fundamentals, and so on. And part two is also included and you have all the courses with the associated fees as well. And then part three as well. Now, since there's no totals on the table here, what I have done is I've actually summed up those totals to give a general idea of what it will cost to complete all the courses. Now, these numbers do not include the administrative fees, so keep that in mind. So here on my screen, I show part one, Introduction to Architecture. So I've taken each course and its fee and so for part one, it's going to cost around $7,236.25. And then part two is going to cost $8,735.50. And then part three is going to cost $11,528.50. So now if we were to include part one, two, and three, it would equal out to Twenty-seven thousand five hundred and sixty and twenty-five cents. So part one is seven thousand two hundred and thirty-six and twenty-five cents. Part two is eight thousand seven hundred and ninety-five and fifty cents. And part three is eleven thousand five hundred and twenty-eight and fifty cents for a total of twenty-seven thousand five hundred and sixty and twenty-five cents which I don't think is such a bad deal for a professional diploma where you're able to practice. Now, of course, this does not include the administrative fees, so please keep that in mind. So in comparison to doing your master's and undergrad, now in comparison to doing your master's and undergrad, this fee is quite reasonable for a professional diploma. Now, of course, this does not include the administrative fees, so make sure to add the administrative fees as well. Number four, application. Now that we've gone into the eligibility requirements for the program, what the program is about, and the fees for the program, let's get into the application process and also the requirements for the syllabus program. So here on my screen, I'm on the application instructions and the process for the application process. And let's get into the details. So when to apply. Application deadlines for consideration prior to the start of each studio term is as follows. They need to be received by December 15 for term one, and term one is from February to June. Received by June 15 for term two, which is September to December. Now, how do you apply for the diploma program? So first you should review the information pages and some of it we've already discussed, but I would encourage you to go through it in further detail. So you gotta, you gotta go through the program orientation, the curriculum sequence chart and course calendar, the fees, accredit assessments and appeals, contacts and student conduct. Once you've done that, you can create an account to the student portal login page. And then you can start to get into the application tab and into the application process. And a part of the application, you need to submit the following documents as a PDF when prompted to do so through the application tab. And so you need to provide some personal and professional information about yourself in the application form. And then you need to also provide scanned copies of post-secondary diplomas, if you have them, scanned copies of official post-secondary transcripts, if you have them, um, high school diplomas, and high school transcripts. You also need to, as part of the application, provide a design portfolio, and they need to be five to 10 images. And so I would go through these requirements for your portfolio and you need to have two signed letters of reference. A reference should be from someone that you have been directly accountable to. This could be a teacher, a professor, a supervisor, or an employer. And you also need to have a five word essay as to why you want to study architecture and then an up-to-date resume as well. And so, like I mentioned before, if you do have a four-year degree in architecture already, a university degree, then you might be eligible for advanced standing. So here we have the advanced standing uh, for either academic or studio courses. So you can get some of those courses that you completed through your university degree transferred 
into the syllabus program for advanced standing. And so there's an online application form for this and you could apply for an entry credit assessment and they would look into the history, theory and technical courses and you would need to complete these forms. So you can get advanced standing for history, theory, and technical courses, and also for design studio. You could also submit to get a studio advanced standing, and there is a studio advanced standing policy that I would recommend you to read through. You would also, for studio advanced standing, portfolio should include different content then the application portfolio. And then there's also an application fee associated. So if you are paying for the application only, it's a 367.50 application fee and so on. So I would go through all of this. And of course, advanced studio standing assessment fee. And there's also an entry credit assessment fee. So if you're getting your history, theory, technical courses, and you want to get those assessed for advanced standing, then there's a fee associated to that. And if you're trying to get your studio courses and your studio uh, accredited and transferred, then you would have another fee for that as well. And you need to have a portfolio, a studio advanced standing portfolios, um, since they should include different content than the application portfolio. So I would review the Appendix B for more information on the Advanced Studio Policy, so make sure to go through that. And so then your information and your application will go through a review process. So that is basically the application process, and I've included a link down below to the website that you're seeing right on the screen here. Number five, more information. So if you want more information about the syllabus program, I've included links down below of the websites that we've been looking and sharing on the screen here. So if you'd like more information about the application process, the fees and the program, links are down below in the description box. I've included down below a link where you can find a list of contacts in which you can get in contact for more information. If you would also like to get more information and webinars from the RAIC syllabus program, I've also included a link for that as well. So make sure to check out all the links down below in the description box for more information. And so there you have it. That is the syllabus program an alternative pathway to licensure. I definitely wouldn't throw this out of the table. Take it into consideration. Try to compare it with the university route. I went through the university route. I wish I knew about the program when I was making the decision. However, I'm not sure that I would have changed my decision because I do like the structure that I got from the university path, but there is some there are some good things from the syllabus program and there are arguments in both. I think both are good contenders. It really depends on what you wanna get out of it and also what works best for you with your schedule. So if you need more flexibility, the syllabus program might be a good alternative. Now it's important to note that the syllabus program is self-paced, so you have to be careful with your time and you gotta be self-motivated as well. So I hope you guys got a lot of value out of the video. If you did, make sure to like the video. And again, if you wanna see more content, make sure to subscribe. I hope to see you on future videos. Until then, Bye.